Welcome everybody, Normal Steve here, and I've got a bevel tutorial for you guys. I've done some upgrades to our service toolbox, but I'm gonna teach you guys a bunch of tricks with bevels. If you don't know how to get your shading just right, this is going to be the tutorial for you guys. So real quick sneak peek, uh, if you click this little plus symbol on the hard service toolbox, it adds a bevel modifier with all the presets ready to go. So this would be a game changer for hard surface models. Then I can ad automatically adjust each one of these bevels and the segments and the amounts as I see fit. And now it's going to be great for a hard surface model, robot, something like that. And if I don't like it, and delete them all at one time. Don't have to go through and try to figure it out. It's just going to iterate through the scene for you automatically. And I guess I just pretty much showed you the whole <laughs> the whole upgrade. Now here's another kicker with this. If I wanted to throw a 3ds bevel on here, uh, it's got a nice little preset ready to go. But what I actually want to do is store the bevels. So I'm going to go back into object here. And let's just say I started out with point 002. It's a very small bevel. And I'm trying this on my mesh objects. And we'll just, for the fun of it, we'll do a couple of extras here. And let's just add it to all of them. And as you can see, they now all have the 3DS bevel. And I'll go ahead and type in point. 002 on the add-on because this is the global control. Now I'm going to come down here to the store location rotation scale. It will also store the bevel. So if I put that in and now I've changed this to one iteration, instead of having to come here and try to fool around and get it just right, you can now add the bevel here as well and iterate between the different bevel sizes, which is going to be pretty cool. And then something a little bigger, who knows, whatever, whatever you want to do. And the segment count, I can bring that down and I'll add that as well. And the global update's actually not gonna show that. I just had to pause the video and think about that for a second. It's actually updating over here. So you'll see the segment count will actually be changing over here. So let's visualize that. So right now, as we iterate through basic bevel, move forward the segment count is increased here on collection three then it's increased again so then if i want to add another one in with say four segments and i'm going to change this to 0 0.005 and i'll save that i can iterate between these two and it will save the segments and the bevel and it will update in the uh, modifier tab here it won't update on the add-on because the second you move this you move everything and so that's not going to dynamically update with it, nor should it, because it's not the function. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's pretty cool. And I think that's going to be an absolute game changer for how you guys do bevels. If you want to go pick up the add-on, it's on Blender Market. And it supports the channel because I do want to just make add-ons and tutorials and cool things like that and write out software. That would be a nice day job for sure. And also, if you want, you can go over to the Patreon page and pick up add-ons over there as well for the low low and get them every single month, all the updates, just like you would if you had got something on Blender Market. But the great thing is you can get a bunch of different add-ons and then all of the updates and just having one transaction, which I think is pretty useful. All right, shading is really important. How are you going to get good shading? Well, number one way you're going to do that is here and turn on cavity i've already got it on but if you have it off you can see it doesn't look too good if you've got the add-on the hard surface toolbox you can right click and then show cavity with that uh, custom context menu and it's going to turn on both and that way you can play with the ridge and valley and accentuate the edges and it almost separates the faces uh, from the edge so you can kind of see what's going on just a little bit better so if we come in here you'll see there's a a definite enhancement of where those faces are separated and then you can kind of play around with how you see this whatever works best with your monitor you can change the shading back to studio material and just this flat setup here it's okay there's nothing wrong with that switch over to the mat caps if you want to check shading and see how your material is going to end up looking like this this is good 
you can see that little stop sign. But if you turn it this way, it's all stretched out to a point. It's not going to be terrible, but it's not going to be like great right here. So you would have to fix that, um, do some different things to fix it. But just for the shading sake, I like random. So if you choose any one of these mat caps, you can actually make the mat caps random. So something like that looks really good. You can sort of see everything. Now, moving on, but let's go into some bevel tricks and then we'll go back to that. Now I'm gonna be using the uh, Blender Kit add-on here and I just wanna throw a material onto this. So I'm gonna get something like metal and just 4.0 is glitchy right now. Still very glitchy. So let's get something we can definitely see. I'm just gonna drop this right there. I wanna jump into cycles and all you gotta do is literally just throw a cylinder in your scene if you wanna follow along. You just throw a basic cylinder into the scene, jump into face select, grab these top and bottom, hit inset, and then we can do something like extrude faces along nominals and come back out and make sure you shade that auto smooth and you'll pretty much have the same thing I've got. So I just copied a bunch of them into the scene and now I've got this material. And Blender Kit's really good for this stuff. So if you guys don't have the latest version, yes, it is working in Blender 4.0. So back over to Cycles, make sure that you're there. And I want to pull in these two objects. You can see even though one has material and one doesn't, that it's it has the actual um, same topology. So let me just throw this on here as well, I believe it's this one. Fine, so now that looks good, I like that. Now, all you have to do is Shift A, and you don't have to hit S in 4.0, you just type in bevel, that's all new. You can drop this in, and where you're dropping this in is on the normals. You don't even have to have anything attached to it, but I do have material. So as soon as I throw that in, voila, you've got a bevel. So if you have garbage shading, that's going to really just fix it for you. So if I hit M to mute that node, you can see Exact same mesh, exact same texture. One has the bevel node on it, one does not. Now that's only gonna show up in a render. That can kind of save your tail if you're brand new at Blender. So that's wonderful. Now if we jump back over here, and just a little hint for you guys, if you are in edge mode, this is gonna disappear. Your preset button is gone. So don't look for it because it's not gonna be there. Is it just going to give you a context error? So you have to jump back to object mode. I'd shoot you back to object mode with the add on, but one way or the other, you still got to go back to object mode. So there you go. There's that. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and delete that and Alt H back, all this fun stuff here. And once again, if you want, you can now add the bevel, the 3DS bevel, to everything in your scene change all of these segments. And I'm kind of holding down shift as I do this, shift and left mouse. Then you can adjust everything, every single bevel to be perfectly identical. All right, and one last thing, the append all here, you can come in and literally, you can switch between a preset gallery of some harder to make preset models, or you can switch to this gallery, click on your icon folder here, come down to whatever drive that you have that has blend files, hit accept. It's gonna populate a list of blend files for you. So if I was to just click this right here, I can now append in objects, either linked or at the 3D cursor or a collection. So if I just click right here, I can drop in, let's see, I've never used this one because this is a blend file I bought from somebody. So let's just dump that in, doesn't do anything. But if I switch this to collection, I reload the exact same blend file. Sometimes it takes a while if you got a lot of stuff in there. And I can just click on the collection and now it's going to dump the collection in there for me. And it's a funky little thing here. I don't know how good this is gonna work because I've kind of overloaded my PC, but this is a shape-shifting torus thing I bought. The guy who did it, very smart with geometry nodes. And I kind of liked this because it was gooey gooey and neat and I think even threw some very nice textures on there there we go so if I give that just a second to load up then all that stuff you have will automatically show up 
and that's not all the right click con uh, the control right click context menu when you have something selected you can come in here and do a lot of different things it's got the preset bevel it's got the mirror tools and all of that so there's a lot more to the hard service toolbox but it's a much longer at um much longer tutorial if i keep going so that's about it tell what you guys think about it in the comments i know i'm kind of jumping around scenes here but just a couple more things you can click this little uh, button right here this is also a bevel button but it's just the icon i chose so when you click this all it's going to do one time is turn on the carver tool add-on which is a hard surface modeling add-on built uh, directly into blender so just take advantage of that with Control shift x and then you can press spacebar and make either a rectangle a line or a circle you can press w to go down in your vertice count subdivisions you can press x to go further forward now it's going to create mesh if you don't have anything selected like i didn't just now and so you have to actually have something selected and then you can hold down alt move that around whether it's a rectangle or whatever and then cut something very nice now when you've got that you can just go back and shade it smooth again and now that's going to look really nice and that's going to be a hard surface modeling um, tool for you i got a full tutorial on that so check my videos I'll put a link in the description to that as well because the Carver tool, I did an advanced course on that. It's amazing. So that's it. Appreciate you guys watching. Smash that subscribe. Smash that like. Tell what you guys think about the add-on. If you do go pick it up, make sure to rate it. Slam it with five stars because I think it's worth it. And if you don't um, happen to like everything in the add-on, you want to see something else, let me know. I'm always willing to upgrade it with some new options to what you guys need. And yes, I am working on some interesting things like shifting loops and things like that within the add-on. So I'll see you guys in the next one.